M5. After the installation of the uh, Link ECU, so standalone ECU. Didn't do that before. And before I start the car, I just want to show that all of the BC functions still work because that is controlled by another computer which uh, I kept on the car. But none of these readings will be accurate from this point on except for like the temperature and car speed and stuff like that so let's start it up immediately i can tell that the uh, idle is much smoother one of the common complaints of the E34 M5 is the rough idle which it has but I don't feel it now it's gone the easiest way to tell is just to sit have your head on the head headrest and if you don't feel any uh, uh, obtrusive vibrations or any sudden spikes in the engine vibration then it's smooth a little bit about going standalone so the first thing that we discussed was removing the MAF. As you know, the MAF on the M5 is kind of the weakest link. It is the part that likes to go wrong and is very expensive to replace or even find or even calibrate. And you can't do it by yourself. So if the MAF is starting to go bad, number one, you there's no way of you of there's no way for you to tell, and your car would just run worse over time until the engine light comes on and then you need to get it calibrated or find a replacement and, it, and if you even if you find a replacement there's no way of telling if it's good or not on top of that using the MAF the throttle response is not as good so what we did was we deleted the MAF we have a blanking section which is nicely machined in place of the original MAF and now instead of using the MAF signal we are using the throttle position sensor the TPS and also together with that the man manifold air pressure sensor so we are using two sensors in replacement of the MAF on top of that we also added other functions like we get the added tunability of the intake flap so now we can adjust the intake flap based on two factors the engine speed and the TPS so of course that will take some fine tuning I drove the car just now a tiny bit just up and down the street and I think the current setting is that the flap will open at 3000 rpm I think past half throttle or something and it feels really good when it comes on but it it almost feels a little bit v y so it's not it's not as smooth as I wish so I probably will ask them to lower the opening threshold to maybe like 2000 or 2005 let's see I mean this is the advantage of having a standalone ECU it's the fact that you can tune and do everything you like Another thing that we implemented is the compressor control. So now we can use the ECU to control the AC compressor to protect it basically from over revving. So when you're really pushing on the car, uh, the ECU will signal the AC compressor to turn off. So that's another added benefit of going standalone. And of course, the other thing that I should mention is removing the distributor so now the distributor is gone in place of the distributor I have a blanking plate which is also nicely machined and on the blanking plate we are using a cam sensor to detect the cam position and the cam sensor will then tell the ECU what position the cams are in and the ECU basically does the job of the distributor and signals uh, when to fire the sparks and of course, uh, the original uh, was using an ignition coil, a single ignition coil with the spark plug leads. That's all gone now. 
we are using direct coil so that also helps with the responsiveness of the engine i haven't seen the di the dyno charts yet because according to the guy he still needs to do some fine tuning but according to my very short two minute drive up and down the street i can tell you that this car drives significantly better it's much smoother i can tell the power band is the torque comes on much sooner there aren't as many flat spots as before and it just pulls so hard it pulls even harder than this car in front of me the 996 which also has a 3.6 so both these cars have a 3.6 displacement both of these cars have six cylinders this one built in 1989 with the added benefit of a standalone ECU that car much more complicated so it's uh, from the year 2001 it has a electric throttle it has Vario RAM plus it has a intake resonance flap it has a sports exhaust which uh, is which has opening flaps as well it's much more complicated but this car just now when I drove it it, it feels faster than that it's really it's really crazy how uh, BMW really made a really good engine 10 years before Porsche did. It's insane. So let's just take it. I want to show you guys. So let's reverse. AC is nice and cold. It idles so smoothly. No more lumpy idle. Some people might miss that, but honestly, no. Lumpy idle is, n is never a good thing. Gotta open the gate. Okay. The gate is open. I don't have my driving rig today, so handheld cam is how I will be driving. So all I'm gonna do is just drive down this road and I'm not even gonna do it so fast. So first gear. So smooth. So much faster. Woo so much faster. It's crazy. And the response. I paid a lot of money for this standalone ECU, but I think it's it's probably really worth it. I mean, not only do I get the added benefit of the performance, but in the future, maintaining this car is going to be much easier. Sensors will be easier to come by. Troubleshooting is easier. Everything can be checked on the laptop. some fine tuning so let's see we'll get it sorted but right now it feels really really good but just now I don't know if you can tell when you're really pushing on it at around 4,000 it's a tiny bit of misfiring and that could be the spark plugs maybe you need to check the gapping on the spark plugs but like I said it needs it needs some more fine tuning So, originally on the hub dynos, when we dynoed this car, uh, if you look at the, uh, the horsepower curve, we were making a maximum horsepower at 6,500 RPMs, and the power figure is uh, 287 PS. After the tuning, if you look at the purple line, you can see that there is a significant 
increase in the area under the curve and the power has been raised up to 313 horsepower which is uh, 26 horsepower gain at the hubs pretty good it's about 10 percent and then uh, we look at the uh, the torque so the torque went from uh, 35.8 kilogram meters of torque to 38.7 and that is about mm, almost almost like maybe an eight eight percent gain in torque but one thing I do want to point out is if you compare the shape of the lines you can see that the newer line is uh, more smooth however there is a bit of a torque dip between uh, 4,000 and 5,000 and that's that's uh, I couldn't really figure out why but when you're driving, you don't really notice this torque dip, so I'm not too concerned. So I'm very happy with how it drives now. It's 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 excellent. And so in the next video, which uh, I decided to do kind of a long-term testing with this car, and I will share my feedback and my thoughts after having driven the car three to four weeks and you will see that after the th three and four weeks period my thoughts started to really uh, to filter down and to precipitate and I'm able to to think more clearly because in this first video you can see that I was over the moon I, I was so excited that I, I actually overclaimed and said that this this M5 felt faster than the 996 which is which is just not true and so after driving the car three to four weeks i decided to make another video and in that video you will see what it's like to to live with the standalone system and what the true benefits of it are so anyway thanks for watching and i hope you tune in for the part two of the e34 m5 standalone ECU video. Thanks.